Hello and welcome back to the game room. You know what I love? Video games. You know what I love? Talking about games. And it seems like a lot of people these days who cover games seem to hate them. Or at least the people who play them. Well that's not me. And that's not the 2,131 of you beautiful people checking out this video here today. Well, I decided because someone asked me this last year, or even recently, because these videos always do well, my most expensive PS1 games, I have really spent a lot of time in the last couple of years investing in getting some solid PS1 offerings, catching up on games I had missed out on that I'd been wanting to get that I stupidly should have gotten in 2018. So this will be the third time I've done this video. Now the first time I did top five, last time I did top 10. Well, because I keep doubling it, we're doing my top 20 most expensive PS1 games. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's check it out. There's a lot of games out there some of which you've never even heard of. That's where I come in. My name's Luke. I've been playing games since the age of two, and I have no life. This is my game. So PS1 prices kind of exploded, at least I noticed they really exploded back in 2021, most likely due to the pandemic, things of that nature. Since then, when I did my follow-up in 2023, prices had kind of come down to earth a little bit. And now, a year later from that, it's, it's kind of balanced out even more. So all of the stuff across the board has dropped value, which I am okay with. As I always say, I am a collector, not a seller. I don't plan on selling any of these games, even ones I got for a deal. It really doesn't matter all that much. So let's get started with my 20th most expensive game, which is a game that I've never played. I picked it up recently. The first time I really kind of found out about it was when Norm the Gaming Historian did a video on it a few years back, and that is Square Enix's Brave Fencer Musashi. So this bad boy, I want to say I picked it up in late 2022, um, something of that nature. I think I got it off price charting and all the pricing we're doing today is off price charting. Now I wanna say I got it for maybe a hundred bucks. Um, nothing crazy, maybe a little bit less than that. And right now what it's going for is about $108. So I haven't massively lost my ass on it. So that's nice and it's still about what it's worth. It's a, a one disc, no two disc game. It is complete. You know, I try to get these games complete when possible. And it's a action RPG made by Square that's 3D based. And, you know, just one of those things where no one really talks about it that much. When you think of Square Enix, you think of the Final Fantasies. You think of Legend of Dragoon. You think of, you know, some of the other offerings that kind of get mixed up with Enix. Brave Fencer Musashi, as far as I know, that's the only version of this game that was ever released, ever came out. And from what I've heard, it's a very fun game. I'd like to jump into it and check it out, but that is what we are starting out, number 20. Now, number 19, this is a game I picked up very recently. So, a remake of it just came out. Why I picked this up, I don't know. I massively overpaid for it. It was at a local game store, but because I'm kind of wanting to get all the PS1 RPGs, and I have most of them now, especially the tactical ones, I picked up. Tactics Ogre on the PS1. Now, I know that this game is sig not significantly, but more improved than what came out on the Super Famicom, the game I covered back in 2017. And this bad boy right now is going for $120 complete. And I foolishly played, I think I paid like $150 or it was massively overpriced. Uh, the, the local game store to me, I love them to death. They have great stuff but they also mark some stuff up and you know i had some gift cards some money left over from the holidays so it was one of those things where it's like i never come across this game it's here let's support local business i'll pick it up and so i got it uh am i gonna put it in i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna play it. it they they currently have a copy of a uh, ogre battle for the ps1 which i'd also like to get even though i have the super nes version and it's just one of those things where i, I want to have it i want to complete the the ps1 rpg sets but if I'm going to replay Tactics Ogre, I'm most likely going to play the remake that just came out that I have on the Switch. But then again, I might not. 
who knows? Maybe maybe I'll get down on some of them PS1 era graphics. It is very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics. So the fact that I could kind of relive that using the old school well, PS2 controller I usually use on my PS1. But that's it. 120 bucks. That is my 19th. So just to show you, all of my games are over $100. So we're looking at at least $2,000 worth of games here. Uh, not too much more than that, though. That's what's nice is the there's a kind of a there's there's a lining of the pack. You know, you have a lot of games between the hundred to two hundred dollar range, and moving into the number nineteen spot, which actually I mi I mixed it up. The real number nineteen is this game. So I generally stay away from long boxes. I did just pick this up on my birthday as well. Been looking for it in the regular jewel case, but I could not find it anywhere. I have bought it once before, and it was a sham listing on Amazon, so I sent it back. This again was picked up at the game store, much more reasonable, and that is In the Hunt, the long box version. Now, I wanted the CD version of it, but I'll settle for the long box. So actually, this is number 19, Tactics Ogre is number 18, and this, and barely, this game is $119.47. So they're kind of, they're almost one-to-one -one as far as the price goes but this is a really cool uh, side-scrolling shooter type game in the vein of more of a metal slug so it's not necessarily like your typical your typical side-scrolling shooter where it's really I mean this is a hard game don't get me wrong but it's just one that I really wanted to get in the collection it is very much like metal slug where it's just over-the-top action really nice chunky graphics and other than the one other on the ps1 you don't really hear about it. I don't think it's got re-released anywhere else. And it's a solid submarine game. Lately, I've been really getting down with some submarine games. I picked up that and Squoon. And it's almost one of those things where I should just do a video dedicated to underwater vehicles or underwater games. But In the Hunt, that was one I had been hunting for for a long time. And even though it's not the jewel case version, that's all right. It's, it's close enough. Okay, moving on to number 17. Now, this one had some drops because I want to say this one was at least in my top 10 last time. I've also picked up more games since then. But now, my Ark the Lad collection, which I picked this up for a steal off eBay. I did a offer. Like, I think I did like an offer of $100. This is complete. All of the items are in it. And they accepted it. And at the time, the game was going for about $200. Now it's kind of come closer to where my deal isn't that big of a deal. It's around $124. Complete. But still, it's got the first, I want to say the first three Ark the Lads. And then an Ark the Lads side story. I, I think that's what's on this. I've been meaning to go through and play at least Ark the Lad 1 for years now. Because I heard it's short. It's another tactical RPG. But just in my mind, it's hard to really wrap around where it's like, if I'm just going to play, I want to play more than just one because I hear the first one's very short and, you know, there's love or hate things about the later entries. I actually just picked up one of the ones on the PS2 because it would be nice to kind of finish some of the, I'm, I'm really getting into finishing some of these subsets of RPGs, you know, like uh, Star Ocean and Wild Guns and things of that nature before they get even more expensive on the PS2 and things of that. But I'm just kind of dabbling my toes into it. For the most part, I hear the games are not that great. So it's not like I'm really killing myself to get it. But Ark the Lad, my number 16. Now, my number... Or is that 17? See, I'm going to really... When I go into the extra 20, I'm going to lose track. I think that's... Let's see. 20, 19, 18, 17. Yeah, 17. There we go. Now, my number 16... Another one that took a little bit of a drop. This one got up there quite some time. Uh, I picked this up... During COVID, when I traded in all my duplicates to a place called Nostalgia Alley up in Marim, and I finally found a copy of it that I could get for myself, and that is Parasite Eve 2. I recently played Parasite Eve 1 a few years ago, really enjoyed it, was looking forward to playing this game, and it's one of those games I didn't even know existed, even though I was a big fan, not a big fan, but I, I was very much aware of the first Parasite Eve, and then this one kind of just came out and flew under the radar. At the time when I picked it up, it was going for around 70. It got up around kind of crazy, 150, 175 a couple of years back. Now it's kind of chilling around $125 complete, which is a little bit more reasonable. As far as the game goes, have not played it yet. I hear it's a little bit more action-based than the first one. Not quite as good, in my opinion, for, or from what I've heard. Fair enough, I haven't played it, so I don't have an opinion on it. And you know what's funny? There's a third game, too. A third game called The Third Birthday. I guess uh, Square Enix lost the Parasite Eve license. 
And I have picked that up, and I'm going to be talking about that in a sequels that I didn't know about video coming up one of these days. So, spoiler. But yes, number 16, Parasite Eve 2. Moving on next to number 15. This was another game that was on my original top 10 list. And I think it almost was on my top 5 list from 2021. It was a few spots out. And this one really is more to do if I've bought more expensive games over the years. And that this is a game I did cover back in, I think, 2022. It's really fun. It is Sony's answer to Zelda. Unfortunately, they made a sequel that's nothing like it. And that is Alundra. So I picked up Alundra. I played it excellent game there's a lot of weird variants with alundra so if you know about alundra collecting i think this is the version d so i have this disc and then i have the background that looks like this there's like in one of the things working designs did which yes a lot of these are going to be working designs games they made variants of their different disc types and just things to drive collectors nuts so for alundra specifically there is so many different versions of it and current price wise for alundra is 127 dollars and 41 cents and apparently i found this out in the comment section from i think i think the uh the, the last time i did this video there's a map there's a map that i don't have so yes even though i'm saying it's cib it does not include the map, but that's kind of where price charting drops the ball a bit is they only have CIB. They don't have a, a thing for maps, which I'm glad. You know, I don't give a dang about the stupid map. I can look that up. But yes, technically my coffee is probably not worth that full 127, but I'm happy with it. If you haven't played the game, it is basically a Zelda clone. Super fun, very dark, a lot darker than I was expecting, and also a lot longer and a lot more challenging. Like the, the puzzles in Alundra, they don't take no prisoners. So you, sometimes you'll be in there and you'll be throwing your head against the wall and you'll try something random and it works. And also, side note about Alundra, I was playing Alundra when I was on a tough ice challenge that made me make a loud, audible noise that woke my wife up, and it was a fortuitous wake-up, because right after I woke my wife up, my newborn at the time had a spit-up episode that she was able to catch immediately and stop any other life-threatening scariness. So yes, Alundra has a special place in my heart just for that. And that's number 15. Now, number 14 is a little bit of an exception because this is my... I talked about this in the first time I did this video. I have a copy of Castlevania Symphony of the Night Greatest Hits disc and manual. Or not disc, but case and manual. But I have the actual black label disc. And it's funny, my buddy Mike Tendo a few years ago had the opposite problem. But he refused to send me his disc for disc or case for case. Yeah, I'm still holding against you, buddy. No wonder you didn't get that Mortal Kombat 2 manual. So, yeah, uh, but it's still worth... I think the case and manual is worth 71 and the disc is worth 63 So combined, this is still worth $134. It just inched out a uh, the game that would have been number 20 was actually my... my <laughs> ironically, my manual and disc-only copy of Dino Crisis 2 that was uh, that would be like 100 bucks. But yes, this goes for about 134 Phenomenal game coined the term metroidvania though it's funny castlevania symphony of the night is far more of an rpg than any game that really ever uses the metroidvania label or metroid ever did or the og castlevania ever did so it's weird how it started it but anyways fun game one of the greatest moments of ever having the upside down castle be revealed the voice acting is next level if you ever play it on anything other than the original ps1 release they usually have the new dub of the voice acting so it's not nearly as much fun but just a really really solid game it makes sense it goes for what it does uh even complete i think either one it would this would be higher on the list but because i have them mixed together like this that's why it's around number 14 i said so yeah that's what we're looking at now number 13 along with in the hunt this is one of the newest additions to my collection and what's nice about this one is i actually got one over on the game store that i buy all the stuff from so for some reason now this this copy it's called herx adventure it is complete Everything is in here. It's got the case, got the manual. It's nice and crispy. They had this listed for a hundred bucks. And even at that time, the game was going for around 135 and now it's going for 140. 
So finally, that makes up for me taking a bath on Tactics Ogre. But Herc's Adventure, another game I have not played. It's got that cool, like Don Bluth looking animation, animated style. There was a game that came out recently. Was it like Barbarian Axe or Heavy Axe or something like that on the on modern like PS4 type era and Switch that looks similar to this? I remember my buddy Rewind Mike was playing it and said it was really good and it was like this game. And that's what put this game on my radar. And so I've been looking for this for years. I've just never come across it. Ironically, this was the first time I came across it. It was priced decently. I had to pick it up. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. This will most certainly be put on the backlog to beat in 2025. If not sooner than that, if I get through the rest of these backlog games. And it's a top-down action kind of game. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily RPG-like, but it looks a lot of fun. And one that I am taking, uh, I'm taking a lot of excitement getting to that one. All right, so number 13... Dropped out of the top 10. There was a time where this one was number three, I want to say. Going for a couple hundred dollars. Mercifully, it has come down to earth. And I think that's a good thing. Because this is a rare Square Enix kind of test for a genre they never do. And at the time, late 90s Square was just knocking everything out of the park. Other than Final Fantasy Spirits Within, they could do nothing wrong. Including a shooter in Einhander. Really, really fun game. Really unique concept. Different ways of playing it. You have three different ships you can choose from the beginning. You get weapons as you destroy enemies and then you can integrate them to yourself. Super difficult. Now, for a while there, this game got up around $100 and then it exploded to around a couple hundred dollars. It has luckily come down to earth. Now, I picked this up around 2015, 16. I think I got around... 80 70 90 dollars around them now it is finally settled around 145 dollars which is still pricey but man as good as this game is and if you're a shooters fan i i honestly think this is still a bargain based on how much shooters go for on any other system i mean especially look at the genesis turbo graphics 16 even some of the shooters now on the xbox 360 things like death smiles and uh, all those kind of games are getting up there. So you can still get a complete copy of Einhander, a Square Enix game that is very unique, very cool, and just a lot of fun, but punishing. I got stuck at level four, could not get past it, and I just tapped out. But one of these days, if I ever have infinite time, I'd like to go through and check it out and see if I can beat it. All right, so that was number 13. Moving on to, I oh, know that was number 12. That was number 12. Herc's Adventures 13, that was number 12. Number 11. So number 11 is a phenomenal game. I finally played and beat it last year. Can join the crowds of saying how amazing this is and how we need a remake that actually finishes Disc 2, which is surprising that I never knew the game was unfinished. That's how well this game has lasted. The fact that the second disc was not finished was never spoiled for me. Someone who knew about this game from the day it came out you already know what I'm talking about, Xenogears. So Xenogears, I picked this up for about $35 in 2015 or 16. I want to say I got it at Retropalooza 4. Or not, oh no, uh, no, not Retropalooza. I got it at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. That's where I got it. I almost got it at Retropalooza, but I didn't. And so this game is just so good. Wonderful combat system, wonderful storyline, sprawling world. It It's very... It's very approachable, so you don't get super lost in it. Ex exceptional music. Really, like, every I can't gush about this game enough, and it is so good. Unfortunately, it's going for $150 complete now. Now, I don't know what the greatest hits version is going. I can't imagine it's too much farther off. Still worth it. I, I gotta say, still worth it. I am convinced, and I doubt we're ever gonna get a remake of this, but if they do, holy hell. This, this could be a bigger get than the Final Fantasy VII remake. Especially if they actually remake it instead of reimagine it. But I digress. Xenogears, wonderful game. Check it out. Check it out. Now, I think you can still download it and purchase it on the PS3. So before that goes away, get it there for like a few bucks. Check it out. It's well worth it. Awesome, awesome game. Okay, so now we're getting to the top 10. And we're at $150. So this is to tell you, it's going to go up. Not much though. Like I said, they're all kind of reasonable. You know, within reason. Alright, so the next game was another one of the RPGs I wanted to pick up. 
I nearly jumped on this at that game store for 200 but I held myself back, and I'm glad I did, because I found it on price charting within, you know, a month or two of that at, God, 100 bucks, something like that, like a steal, and that is Thousand Arms. Now, I've heard... This isn't related to the Wilds Arms series, which I thought it would. I've, I always thought it was kind of like a Mega Man, Mega Man X, but it's not. Uh, the art style makes it look like it's basically a Super Nintendo RPG that they just put onto the PS1, which honestly I'm okay with. I don't mind that at all. And I, I know that you get, it's kind of a dating sim, which, okay, I'm not too crazy about that because you can... You get different weapons throughout the game, and then you can approach all these different girls and try and woo them. So I'm not quite sure how this equates to a fun time, but I've heard a lot of people say it's great. So I want to check it out. Price-wise, right now, Thousand Arms is $155. So it is not that cost-effective. It, you know, it's a little bit of a risk. Uh, I probably would not have jumped on this had I not known it was good on the offset. But like I said, I'm trying to get... All these different RPGs, and this one kind of reminds me of something like Rhapsody, where it's like, all right, you know what, I'll take a chance on that, because I found it cheap enough. So there you go, Thousand Arms number 10. Now, number 9. So number 9 is a game that I bought, uh, unfortunately, right after my best friend passed. This was kind of a, just a splurge buy. Wanted to cheer myself up, so I picked up Castlevania Chronicles. I know this is a, kind of a remake of... A game that was released for computers I think and then also a little bit of a remake of a the original Castlevania I think I don't know it's I think it has two games on it uh, everyone who has it says it's decent it's just not worth the price and right now it's going for hundred and fifty nine dollars and I got it for hundred fifty bucks back in 2022 so it's luckily not dropped in value. I always count myself happy if the game doesn't drop in value because, you know, whatever. You know, I, I, I buy games. That's my advice. This is what I do. I buy games that I probably shouldn't. But this was a this was one that I wanted to have. I wanted to get both the Castlevania games. I originally saw this in person for the first time at my buddy Wes's house in 2018. And I remember seeing it at the time. I think the game was worth... 100 bucks and be like wow you have castlevania chronicles nobody has that game and i just i wanted to get it so it's my number nine uh, 155 or 159 bucks and i will get to that one and it always gonna have a nice sentiment because like i said when i picked it up all right number eight my most expensive greatest hits game i remember buying this damn thing on ebay Back in 2016, 17, it's funny, I still have the listing, I can look it up in my email. And when I bought it, I did not know I bought the Greatest Hits Edition. That's why I was so ticked off at myself, because I thought I found it for a deal. At the time, I think the regular version was like 40 bucks, nothing crazy, and I got this for 30. And that is Silent Hill. Now, I have gone through and played this, I did this last year. Oh my goodness, what a great time it was. All you Silent Hill fans, you are correct. This is great. This is terrifying. Way scarier than Resident Evil. I'm just going to say that. I still like Resident Evil more, but this is definitely scarier. And looking forward to playing the rest of them. Since I played this, I have picked up Silent Hill 2 and 3 for exorbitant prices on the PS2. I've yet to get 4. I don't really know if I will, but we'll see. 2 and 3 were the ones that I, I know a lot of people talked about. So I'm looking forward to that, but phenomenal game. But still, the did I even say the price on this thing? This goes for $159 as well. So just for the greatest hits, I got for $30, $159. Linsanity right there. Absolute linsanity. All right, number seven. So this is another one I got. I, I, I want to say I, I put a bid on eBay on one of those listings where you could kind of see no one found it. And I just thought, all right, let's see if it goes through. So I placed a bid. I think it was $50, something like that. And lo and behold, I won the auction. And if, of course, I'm like, there's no way they're going to send it. There's just no way. This game, at the time, the game was worth maybe 120 bucks. They sent it. And when I got it, it's complete. That's Lunar 2. So, you know, it's funny. I have a, most of the working designs collection now on the PS1. Yes, Lunar 2. Uh, I don't have Lunar 1. I have not played either of them, but yet again, another RPG on the console. Uh, I know people have their love-hates about working designs, but you gotta give them respect for the packaging. They really went all out. 
My biggest complaint is that these they don't they don't match the rest of the P the PlayStation One games, so it's always a pain in the butt keeping them on the shelf. But yes, as far as price wise, this bad boy goes for a hundred and seventy two dollars now, so not a bad come up, not a bad come up. It's funny, I see these all the time at the game stores, both this and the Ark the Lad collection. So I think because they are so niche and packaged this way, it keeps some people from getting them. Maybe if they didn't have all this, they'd be more like Wild Arms. Because you can find them outside of the box, but then people either try and mark them up so much, or just there's just not as much interest in them. Okay, and now we're going to get to number six. Number six is another new game to my collection uh, that I got before last time. I, like I said, I've added a lot of stuff to my PS1 collection. And I played the original Super Famicom version that we never got here in the West. They actually did port it to the PlayStation 1 in Japan. We didn't get that one either. But we did get the sequel that was officially released here in the West under just the title Clock Tower. And I'd been wanting to get this one. I originally passed on this years ago because I thought it was just the... I thought it was what I suspected, which was the first clock tower on the Super Famicom just ported to the PS1. And then when I did a little research, I found out that was a thing. But I did not know that this was actually Clock Tower 2. So stupidly, I didn't get it. And Scissors Man runs rampant. I haven't picked this up yet. I'm looking forward to playing it this Halloween. I think I'm going to play it this Halloween. Uh, one thing that was a bit of a bummer about it is I paid through the wazoo on this. This was an old Hollywood video rental, which I couldn't tell in this in the game. So I got this at the game store, but you can tell it's got the like the I don't know. I, I both dislike it and don't dislike it. So it was a rental, but it's in good shape. So as long as the thing runs, that's fine. My copy of Breath of Fire 4, I found out was a blockbuster rental after I played it, but that one did have issues where it was crashing and I had to actually turn my system upside down to get it to get past the crash point and then the whole thing worked. But yes, number six, clock tower. Oh, I didn't even tell you the price. I'm getting bad at that. Number six, $175. So I hate to say it, I have taken a bit of a bath on this one. Paid a little bit more than that, but not too much. And if pricing does continue to go up, it'll eventually even out. All right, now we're at the final five. The final five games of my PS1, the way I started this way back when. And some of those are still on this. Ironically, I want to say my most expensive game is now my fifth most expensive game. This is a game I covered back in 2022. I actually started it in 2021 and then finished it in 2022. And it's a game that I paid nothing for. Someone gave this to me back in 2015. One of the uh, one of the coolest things I've ever been gifted when I was back at my old job. The guy just found out I was a, a gamer and it's like, hey, I have these games. You want them? Absolutely. And that is Sweek It In 2. So this game was at a high of about $400. It has come down to earth. It's now only $201.40. Now I will say... Has anyone actually found it for that? Because sometimes you will see these manipulations on price charting uh, where it says it's going for something, but I, I don't know. I, I find it a little odd that it's dropped that much, maybe because of the remasters coming out of one and two. Super cool game. You have a party of six. It's really dark. Luca Blight is a phenomenal villain who needs to get more play. You don't have to play the first one in order to enjoy it, because I didn't. Um, but yeah, really cool game, number five on my most expensive, and for a while there, this was the most expensive PS1 game, bar none. In recent years, it has been overpassed, some of which by the games I'm about to talk to you about. So let's get to number four. So number four might be my favorite game in this whole video. I loved playing this. I covered this back at the end of 2022, I want to say. And it was a game that I was very interested in after I found out about it on a GameSack episode. It is another Working Designs game. But it's one of their... Actually, I was going to say it's one of their more reserved. But yeah, there's, there's Yoda in it and Valley Girls. But still, Vanguard Bandits. Vanguard Bandits is such a good game. And such a shame that it is locked away on the PS1. No one knows about it. It's another one of those disc variants. So there's one like this and then there's one that has the white disc on it. 
awesome, awesome tactical RPG. I'm not a big mech person, but I really love playing it. There's three different endings. They all diverge around chapter six. I went through and I beat all the different endings. And also another nice thing about this game is it kind of heralded in me starting to grow on YouTube because as soon as I went and started doing uh, started doing videos about this, changed the name of the channel, started focusing more on these kind of videos. I started really getting growth. Now monetize, we have members available. We've had people reach out, giving me stuff to review. And this is really nice. So I, I, I really appreciate Vanguard Bandits for this. It's going for $236 now. I wish this one, or $238. I wish this one was more affordable. It's funny, when I picked it up, I got this for $170. And at the time, it dropped down to $150. And if you remember when I covered this video last time, I said, get this game now. If you're interested in this game, pick it up now. It, for some reason, has gone down in value because there is going to be a correction. At the time, the game dropped to like $158. And I hope you picked it up because now it is at 238 and I don't see it ever going down because it is such a good game. So yes, that is my number four. Now my number three, this one also dropped in value, which is a good thing. This was one of my most wanted games all last year. I spent forever chasing it. I finally picked up a copy that has a jewel case that is definitely not perfect. It is a game either made by Wolf Team or Tri-Ace. I always confuse the two. And that is Valkyrie Profile. So I want to say I got this for $200. At the time it was going for around $300. And now the price on it has come down to $264. So still far better than what I paid for. But this is definitely not the cleanest copy in the world. So it has the discs. It has the manual. But I want to say the manual is missing the back page. And one of the cool things is that when I when I reached out to the guy who sold it, because he did definitely lie about some of this stuff, uh, I think he gave me another $20, $30 refund. You know, it, it's not going to make it a cleaner copy, but it did make me feel better. And so, number one, I want to check out, if I can ever get to it, because a lot of these games take a hell of a lot of time. But yeah, Valkyrie Profile, $268, or $264. Uh, down from 300 down from 400 like that game was going nuts luckily it's come down to earth all right number two so the most expensive game that i've picked up recently and recently within the last year uh, i do plan on playing this soon it's a super clean copy i do not know how i got this for as cheap as i did and i'm not going to ask questions it was another one that I almost bit at the game store. It was like $350 or something, and I thought about it. I legitimately thought about it. Thank God I didn't. And that is Kadelka. So Kadelka, the game that I guess was the spiritual uh, pre pre predecessor to the Shadow Hearts series. It's another pseudo turn-based game, kind of a tank controls. Just everything about it. Every time I heard about this game, Hidden Gems, this and that, I just wanted to play it. It was just so damn expensive. And somehow I found a copy for only a couple hundred bucks. And I'm like, well, it's going to be in bad shape. Nope. Everything about this copy is pristine and clean. Has all four discs. The case has no cracks. I think it's just one of those times where you get lucky. And so as lucky as you can when you're overpaying for old video games. But yeah. So I got this one. And now it goes for $268. And that's down. It was up around $300 easily. And there's still people trying to get much more than that for it. Uh, this is a game that I will be playing this year. This is on my backlog to beat for 2024. I know that I've been waiting for the right time. I don't know if I'm going to get all the way to October. Right now, my next... I mean, it might be the next course of action. I'm playing Unicorn Overlord right now, but we'll see. I have a lot of RPGs left. I kind of beat most of the action games on my backlog first, which is probably stupid. But yeah. And then number one, number one most expensive game. It's still the one that I didn't want. My buddy Rewind Mike set me up with it. It's funny because there is... You know what? I just opened it and I forgot. I have a copy of Mega Man Legends in this. I for, totally forgot about the copy of Mega Man Legends. Um, but yes, it's an Atlas game. It started the damn Persona series. That's Revelations Persona or Persona. Uh, Spinoff of the Shin Megami Tensei series. This got up over $400. It's always been on these lists. It is still number one. I want to say this is number one two years running. And will I get to it? Eventually. 
it's now going for the topping out at $324.75. And I totally forgot this one comes with a copy of Mega Man Legends. Weird. Weird. I forgot I had that. I thought I got rid of that. I could have sworn I bought a case. And Anyways. Yes, this is my most expensive game on the PS1, but overall, it is very interesting to see how the PS1 pricing has gone down. Because this game used to be in the high, four, not high, like the low 400s. It doesn't drop much, but it, like I said, all these things have dropped. And so that's why I've really been trying in the last year or so to snatch some of these up in case like Vanguard Bandits, they make a bounce back. But other than... I mean, uh, at this point, I think I've gotten most of the ones I want. I think I'm still looking for Fox Hunt, which I recently found out about because it looks ridiculous. As far as RPGs go, I need Beyond the Beyond, and I need... Um, God, that's about... Other than random things like cases and manuals, I pretty much got them. Oh, yeah, Lunar One. I gotta get Lunar One one of these days. Um, and then Ogre Battle. Ogre Battle. But I have them. That's the thing. Uh, anyways... That's what you get for this week, guys. Let me know what you thought about me doing this supersized 20, 20 game episode. We'll see how long it takes me to edit. Um, but yes, I, I love all of you guys. I know these videos do better than the other ones. So as a reminder, I release a new video every Tuesday. I have a Patreon. I have members. You know what? I'm, I'm probably going to start putting all the Patreons in members in the video here. Here You can see them there so that you can get your name in the video. Uh, thank you guys so much. Your support means the world. It's going to help us be able to afford some more of these, afford a new computer when we get to it. We are about halfway to the computer fund. And now that I'm monetized, who knows? We'll be able to get to that sooner. But either way, it's been so nice getting a hold of you guys. Take care.